Last time, we began to look at the exceptions to the generally agreed principles of interpreting volume data. The exception we covered then revolved around what's known as volume spikes. Today, I turn my attention to what I call fifth wave exhaustions. If you know what you're looking for, this can be a valuable tool to use to keep those probabilities in your favor when making trading decisions. Stay tuned. One of the key elements to self-improvement for any trader is becoming more aware of how the markets move and increasing your understanding of how to exploit that. To do this effectively, of course, means understanding the general principles of price action and volume data. But what will help you to differentiate yourself is understanding the exceptions to those rules, the times when the basic rules appear to be broken. But if you have a thorough understanding of why exceptions occur, you realize that the rules actually haven't been broken, and in fact, they occur for very real and tangible reasons. So today, I focus on one of those exceptions, fifth wave exhaustions. Let's take a look. So first off, I need to cover what a fifth wave is. Well, when I talk about fifth waves, I'm actually talking about waves based on Elliott wave theory. And the fifth wave is actually classed as the final phase of the current impulse move. Now, a word of warning here from my own personal experience. I spent a huge amount of time studying Elliott wave theory early on in my trading career. And Yes, it can provide really valuable insights into the way that price action moves and the way that the markets get driven by traders interacting with the market. And there's no doubt in my mind of the value of Elliott Wave Theory in helping with that understanding. However, what I did learn is that using Elliott Wave Theory as a predictive tool is much more challenging because to use it in that way, you effectively have to wave count, counting the number of waves in each particular move in order to predict where you are in the cycle. And because of the many factors in doing that, including wave extensions, it can actually make identifying that fifth wave a really challenging task. And so during this episode, when I talk about fifth waves, what I'm actually referring to is the final stages of a long-standing trend or impulse wave. And if you think of it in that way, and you're analyzing the volume data in relation to that, then I personally feel it becomes a much more practical way to analyze volume and price data. But let me briefly explain a little bit more about this fifth wave. So the very basic principles behind Elliott Wave Theory is that you have five waves, one, two, three, four, and five, followed by a three wave pullback, ABC. And if you look at any chart of a financial asset, you will see this pattern repeated again and again and again. And so by the fifth wave, I'm referring to this part of the price action here. But again, just for clarity, I'm not proposing that you wave count here. What I'm actually referring to is the latter stages of a long standing impulse wave. Because when you do have wave extensions, which do occur, so for example here, this is an illustration of a third wave extension, as you can see, it becomes increasingly difficult to work out with any certainty when that fifth wave is actually taking place. So let's return briefly to the simpler definition. So in effect, the fifth wave exhaustion is looking at volume data during this period of time. And when you see higher levels of volume compared to the norm, during the latter stages of a multi-wave impulse like this, 
that's often a good indication that the impulse is nearly over and we're about to enter this ABC phase. So why do I call this a fifth wave exhaustion? Well, let's think for a moment about how trends evolve. Very often, the smart money gets into the trends early, far before we ever get to the point of a fifth wave. However, once a larger impulse wave like this reaches that fifth wave stage, it begins to attract a lot of attention from a much wider audience. In other words, traders start to notice this on the price charts. And when they do notice it, it can often cause a frenzy of trading activity as those traders try to get in on the trend. Now, an interesting point here is that just as those traders are entering, the smarter traders and investors are considering the closure of their positions. And that is a lesson in itself. But coming back to the topic, that's why we often see this great increase in volume during the latter stages of an impulse like this. Now, it's that combination of the smarter investors closing their positions and the new entrance to the market effectively running out that means this fifth wave gets exhausted. Everyone who is going to enter the trend already has. There's no one left. And so at this point, there's nobody else to push the impulse wave any further. And because of that, the price therefore reverses and the five wave impulse has come to an end, meaning we see the typical ABC pattern or a pullback to that original impulse. So based on that increased volume that we see during the fifth wave for the reasons explained here, why is this classed as an exception? Well, again, coming back to the basic principles that we've covered in previous episodes, we usually class high levels of volume as an indication of trader commitment. And this makes continuations more likely than it does a reversal. But when we see this activity during those latter stages of well-established trends, i.e. trends that have gone on for some time already, then that increased volume actually tells a different story. And this is the fifth wave exhaustion. Now, in many respects, there are a number of similarities to volume spikes that we looked at last time. And they're both based on the principles of participant exhaustion, i.e. getting to a point where there's no one else left to go in in order to continue with the price move. And when that happens, we see a reversal. It's also similar in respect of the high volume levels that indicate the additional trading in both of these cases. But there are differences also. Volume spikes tend to be based on some form of external catalyst, be that an economic news release or a political event. And it's that that causes participants to engage in that price move. Whereas with fifth wave exhaustions, this doesn't need a catalyst. This is simply based on the price action pattern attracting those final participants in the move. So let's now take a look at some examples of this on a chart. Okay, so here we're looking at a 15 minute chart of Aussie Yen. And we have here a fairly consistent and long standing trend. Now, the point I was trying to make about wave counting is that it does tend to be very challenging and very difficult to do. So to label the various waves in this uptrend here is something that you might be able to do once the trend has finished, but while it's ongoing, it's actually very, very difficult to do. And so despite me calling this a fifth wave exhaustion, as I said before, what I'm really talking about is looking for increased volume data like we see here in an already established trend. And so if we imagine that this price activity has just got to this point, what we're observing is this uptrend, which has actually had relatively low volume all the way up here. And then all of a sudden, 
we see this last surge in activity associated to above average volume. And that is what I'm talking about. So this is the point at which many traders begin to notice the trend and they want to start to get in on the trend to take advantage of it, which is why we're seeing the increased volume down here. Now these, if you like, are the final participants to engage with the trend. Many of the smarter investors would have got in much earlier down here, possibly at the point that the price breaks out above this trading range that we see on the left. Now, because these are the final participants, what this means is that the fifth wave gets exhausted, there's no one left to come in, the smarter investors are beginning to close their positions to take their profit, and what we then see is the price reverse. And most of the trading activity that did take it up to this final level, well, those traders are now finding themselves underwater. So although I was focusing on this volume activity during the latter stages of a trend, I'm hoping you've also gained some additional insights into trader activity that has given you some food for thought about your own trading approach. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to cover a third and final exception to volume data assessment. And this is when volume data is significantly lower than we've seen previously. And this gives rise to an additional pattern in the price action. And so be sure to tune in for that episode. If you haven't subscribed already and you want to be notified when that's available, then you can subscribe to the Darwin X channel right below. But now until next time, trade safe.